when you don't know how to do something, what do you do? You turn on YouTube. That's what I did this week, and I am going to share with you the best DIY projects that you can do to add massive value to your home. So go ahead and grab yourself some popcorn, because the first thing we're gonna be talking about is your popcorn ceilings because popcorn is really just made for eating and even your home buyers will tell you that. And it will add massive value to your house because it gives it a more modern feel than to have popcorn ceilings. They're not really a thing anymore. And buyers like those smooth ceilings or a very light texture. They're more popular with orange peel in Florida. And that's where we're gonna head to is Florida. My friend Paul Peck Drywall YouTube has of course a drywall channel and he does all sorts of repairs. And one of the things he talks about, which is the most popular video is how how to scrape off old popcorn. But if you have an old popcorn ceiling, like I do in several of my rental houses, and you have painted it, which I did, you cannot scrape off the old popcorn. And that was something I learned by watching his channel. So go ahead, grab your popcorn. Let's go watch Paul Peck Drywall do some amazing skim coating. I'm using a 14 inch drywall taping knife and a 16 inch drywall mud pan for this skim coat project. Okay, so this is an older painted popcorn ceiling, so it basically will not scrape off. There's no other options but to either skim coat or put new drywall over the top or demo the ceiling and hang new drywall. Basically, I'm getting the joint compound up on the ceiling. I'm going to smooth it all out. But you can see I'm placing the mud on one side of the knife or the other. That way I'm not piling it up. And also I'm not making a mess. It controls where I put the mud. And you wanna keep your joint compound a little thicker than you would if you were skim coating a smooth surface. So I barely add any water when I'm mixing up the joint compound to skim coat over a painted popcorn ceiling or any type of heavy texture you wanna keep the thickness of the joint compound as it comes out of the bucket basically just thin out any bubbles or make it nice and creamy so this is going to be a really good base coat i get a lot of questions on why i use the all-purpose joint compound for skim coating and the reason is there's a lot more glue in it and so it's a lot stronger and the adhesion is a lot better to me, the light weight mud is just a little too soft, not as strong. So here I'm going again in the opposite direction, which is going to take most of these ridges away. And again, this is the first coat. I'm going to do a whole nother round of skim coating. So doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want to make a mess or have big piles of mud anywhere. You want to keep it consistent. Now between coats, I do not sand. I'll take my six inch drywall taping knife and just kind of scrape any high areas or ridges before I do my second round of skim coating. And when you're pulling, you want to keep the side of the knife that's going over the popcorn kind of raised or you're going to get some heavy chatter marks or ridges. This will take, I give it 24 hours to dry. It'll probably dry a little sooner, but 24 hours for drying time is a good rule of thumb. Did you know that most people, even people that are not selling their house, could add value to their house so easily? And do you know what that one thing is? Their yard. I don't know how many times I've driven past a house that is up for sale that I'm like, oh my gosh, if they just take care of their yard, they would really have, first of all, more interest. And secondly of all, make the appraisers super happy to give you more value to your house. That's the whole idea anyway, isn't it? A well manicured lawn, fresh mulch, pruned shrubs boost the curb appeal of any home. Replacing overgrown bushes with leafy plants and colorful annuals, surrounding the bushes and trees with dark reddish brown mulch will give a rich feel to your yard. Green up your grass. My friend Outdoors with Eric has the most beautiful yard that you've ever seen. And it is one of those things that's gonna be super cost effective for you to do instantly. Like, who doesn't like instant gratification? Just water your yard and fertilize it. Do it properly, and then you're gonna have a better return on your investment. That's a easy way to add value to your house. Green up your yard. If you're wanting to do something a little bit more extravagant and add a lot of value to your house, I'm gonna show you another YouTube channel right now. Waited for the conditions to get just right. 
before we add the polymeric sand. Sweeping and cleaning. I want to try to get, make sure we get all the little pebbles and pieces off. So we'll blow this thing one more time. Again, uh, thinking about uh, pavers and how you would seal them, that's kind of a cosmetic contribution to the project. The polymeric sand will actually lock down and secure uh, this whole paver driveway. So it's not cosmetic, it's a structural improvement. And so I encourage you to think about it. Uh, plus at my house, I've had pavers for oh, about 20 years. Weeds, ants, look at where the ants have already started right here. That's what they do, that's their job, that's okay. But the polymeric sand is gonna stiffen up between every crack and every crevice and between the brick uh, spaces, tighten everything up to a hard plastic that'll last and add to the integrity of this driveway for its entire existence. So it's simple. You just spread it out and sweep it in. Well, since we didn't have the opportunity to share the landscape improvements with you here, what do you say we go back and reflect on the plant types and varieties that we used on this landscape project? We don't really want to see the grout on this, but we want to know it's there. I use a beige color that kind of ties in pretty well. And so to activate the polymer sand, a little bit of water is all that's required. Now, uh, in warm weather, I've been told this G2, the polymer sand that we use, can set up in as little as 60 minutes. And that's the beautiful thing, especially when you're trying to stay ahead of the weather. I'm going to continue to wash this down. You go enjoy the befores and out. You know, pavers add so much curb appeal and character to a residence or even a commercial project. You'll see them used more and more with time. I'm Gary Allen for the Designer's Landscape. Thanks for watching. Now that you've greened up your grass, now that you've done some landscaping, and you might even have replaced your sidewalk with a new fancy paver sidewalk, what about your front door? So many people forget about the front porch. Buyers like a welcoming front porch area, and if you've gotten all this beautiful stuff done, don't stop there. Let's go ahead and make your porch look nice. My friend Natalie from Design to the Nines will show you how she updated her front porch, and she has a lot of other DIY projects that are great for home. So go ahead and let's take a look at what she did. So I went to the local restore here, and I found this amazing light fixture and it was marked for $5 and I was so excited about it. And, and then I went to the checkout and it rung up for $2. And I'm like, are you sure that's the right price? And she said to me, 
Our lighting is 60% off. You can find something like it at Pottery Barn for about $300 right now. And I got it for $2. That's like, whoops. Okay, so I have one problem with installing my light fixture though, is right now it is a recessed light fixture. And so it is meant for like a light bulb to screw right in it. So I found this converter kit. I'll put the link below for it, but it's a really cool product where I can just um, piggy tail it into that. Obviously, I'm not going to endorse you doing this yourself, but that's up to you. I'm doing it myself because I feel comfortable doing that below. So my light fixture is installed and I am extremely happy with how it turned out. It was well under $20 total, including the light fixture and the kit. And now it's time to decorate my favorite part. In my pool and patio decor video, I had a gallery wall and I had somebody ask me, how I went about hanging on stucco. So I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do this. I've got a Sharpie and I'm marked where I'm going to drill. I've got my drill and it has a drill bit on it. Um, and we're just gonna drill into that mark. All right, so then we're gonna tap in an anchor very gently, touch the tip. And then I just put a screw right into the drywall anchor. And now we have a place to hang this picture. Our picture, yay! So I'm a really huge fan of the double layer rug look on the front porch. So I've got my buffalo check rug here and my welcome mat here and I'm gonna set them down now. Now it's time for just a couple final finishing touches. One is this magnolia pillow that I'm gonna put on the bench that I made last week. And then just a couple of accessories. So my front patio makeover is done. I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. It's a place that feels cozy, inviting, just what I had hoped for. So I am just thrilled. And I spent less than probably $100 total on everything. Some of my projects were absolutely free to me because I had the stuff on hand. Other stuff were super inexpensive from the light fixture, which was less than 20 bucks. My bench, which was less than $40. My rugs were pretty inexpensive as well. So I'm just thrilled because I feel like I have a lot of bang for my buck and it's in a very neutral palette that can be good any time of year. I'll probably change it up a little bit here and there seasonally, but for right now, this is a good look for any day of the year. And it's really beautiful from the magnolias to the wreaths, the greenery there. It's a very cohesive look now. And hopefully it will get me by until I'm able to paint my exterior, hopefully in the near future. All right, let's go back inside and go into your kitchen area. Take a good look around. If there's something you can replace that will add a lot of impact, it's your cabinets. But you may not be able to afford to replace your whole cabinets, but you can replace the cabinet doors, which will take off a lot of that budget that you would invest in replacing all your cabinets. My friend Jason with Doing It With Jason is gonna show you exactly what you can do to your cabinets in order to update them and make them more modern and add value to your home. Hi, my name is Jason with Doing It With Jason, and I have been teaching people and building cabinets for over 14 years now. Okay, so what's the upgrade? By swapping out your existing doors and drawer fronts with new ones, you can give your kitchen new life. One of the biggest bangs for your buck in the kitchen is just getting new doors for your existing cabinets. You can transform kitchen from this to this, and it doesn't even take that long. Now, depending on how committed you want to be to this project or how much time you have to invest in this, and depending on your skill level, I'm going to show you a couple different options, and I'm sure one of them should work for you. Okay, so first we're going to start with, hey, I have a garage and I've got a few tools in it, like a table saw or a skill saw, and I think I can handle this on my own. Well, that's perfect, because in this scenario, I highly suggest a slab door, especially for a beginner woodworker or just someone that has the tools, you should be able to accomplish this. Now the slab door is really cool because it gives a modern feel to your cabinets and nice clean lines. Cutting out a slab door is super easy. All you have to do is measure your existing doors, the width and the height, and then get a piece of three quarter plywood that's available at all of your big box stores. Now you wanna make sure the plywood you get is a three quarter inch thick plywood and you want it to be cabinet grade material. 
Generally, they run around $40 to $50 a sheet. And after you cut all your doors out of this plywood, all you have to do is edge band it to clean off and finish the outside pieces. Now for finishing off the edges of the plywood doors and getting rid of all those plies and hiding them, you use a thing called edge banding. Now if you want to take it a step further and you've been woodworking for a while, you can also do a five piece door like you see here. This is going to be a little more complicated. You're going to need special tooling for this, routers, shapers, all kinds of things like that. So I would not recommend doing this if you're just getting started, but if you have the tools, give it a whirl. Now, for the people that just have a screwdriver and that is all you need for this, you can order your doors. It's as simple as taking all the measurements. You need your width and the height of each door or drawer front in your kitchen. Now, all you have to do is make a list of all of those sizes and there are plenty of companies online. All you have to do is a quick Google search. All you do is you give them the list of all of your door sizes and they will make them in whatever shape and size and kind of like detail you want. So you want a farmhouse look or if you want a raised panel country kitchen, you can pick unlimited, unlimited species, unlimited styles, unlimited edging, you name it, they have it all. This will save you a ton of money. Yes, you can call a cabinet company, have them come over, have them take all your measurements and then let them order all these and then mark it up like 20 or 30%. Or you could just do this yourself. You will save a ton of money and it's actually really simple. Now, actually some of these companies, you can get them to stain it and finish it as well. But I recommend ordering these doors and drawer fronts, have them shipped to your home. Then you could paint or stain them to match your existing cabinet frame or boxes. And then you install them yourself. The other option is you can upgrade with newer soft close hinges when you order these doors and they usually have them available and will install them on your door ready to go for you. So the main part of this video was just to help you out, get you know the normal DIY person that wants to get involved but isn't too sure, just to say, hey, you know, you can do it. I promise you, you won't destroy it. Worst case is you just paint over it. My next way for you to increase value to your home is one of the ways that people resist me the most. And I don't know why that is. I think they think it's going to be harder than it truly is. And that is painting your house. On a 3,000 square foot home, it's gonna cost you the paint itself probably around 375 to $600. That's just for the inside. And I'm talking from wall to wall of paint. On the outside, it's gonna probably cost you a little bit more. The labor, if you were to hire somebody, is going to cost you around $1,600 to $3,000 to $6,000. But if you could do that yourself and you have time before you put your house on the market, which right now would be a perfect time because it's way before spring, this is going to increase not only interest to your house, it's also going to increase value to your appraisers. People do not like a project that they have to do. And it, nothing is more glaringly obvious that needs to be done than a paint job. I've done videos on this myself. It's not that difficult to paint. Yes, it's time consuming. Yes, it's super messy, but yes, it will add a lot of money to your home. Of course, this is what you want in the first place. So go ahead, get some rollers, start painting. I just gave you five amazing ways to add value to your home. What are you sticking around for? I put all these YouTube channels in the description so you can follow each and every one of them. And that way you can add a lot more value to your home. My name is Christina Smallhorn, your real estate whisperer. And I tell you all this, because you matter. Now go get going.